So we're Andrews Cooper. We're an end-to-end -end engineering services provider. And we work through all aspects of the product commercialization. So starting out with helping people with R&D, into product development, into test and hardware, through the automation process, and even to service and support at the end. So that whole end-to-end -end process, we can help people whatever position that they need help, their help in, whether it's engineering resources or product development, we've got a team that can help in throughout all those areas. We're here at ATX because we do sophisticated precision automation, custom automation for people and helping people find solutions to their tough challenges. My name is Ryan Harris. I'm an application engineer at Andrews Cooper and my background is mechanical engineering. I've had about 24 years experience in custom automation design and a large portion of that time has been designing systems that have dispensing of one type or another. Hi, and thanks everyone for coming. My name's Jerry Entrick, and I'm the senior, zap, senior Applications Engineer at Andrews Cooper as well. My background is automation controls, machine vision, and software development. 30 years experience in custom automation and development. At Andrews Cooper, we've been providing engineering services for over 23 years and have become a trusted partner for solving complex engineering challenges for emerging technologies. We work with companies large and small in various areas of technology, including in consumer electronics, med tech, space exploration, and warehouse logistics and robotics. Today, we want to talk about precision adhesive dispense and vision technologies. So one of the things that led us to this topic was in the middle of developing an optical system for a large AR VR client that we were working with, we found that there was this need to prove some very precise adhesive dispensing and make sure that their whole product could actually be viable. And so they weren't sure what type of adhesive to use, whether it whether they could do it with adhesive or they'd have to come up with some mechanical means to assemble this optical system, but they needed somebody to help them with that. And especially in some of that precision dispensing to see if they could shrink down the size and put it into a form factor that would be manufacturable. And a lot of these techniques in this presentation are geared around that customer and what we did for them and how we solved their problem. And really, that's what we do. We try and help companies, you know, realize their product development through whether it's the product development side for its testing, helping them design some testing systems, or it's helping them do design for automation, getting them to that end goal of final automation and a commercialized product. Let's start with micro dispensing. So now miniaturization really has been important in a lot of different technologies. So electronics manufacturing, we all are familiar with cell phones, how everything's been condensed down, our cameras on our phones, everything that's condensed into our phones. And with that comes the need for the miniaturization of manufacturing of assembling all those tiny little components and oftentimes that means dispensing tiny little group amounts of adhesive in precisely the correct place and that goes for medical device fabrication it goes for biomedical even the 3d printing and additive manufacturing they're doing some very small micro printing as well now and then optical display technologies. Again, your cell phone camera is a good example of that. Just shrinking down, getting high quality in a very tight, small package. And dispensing is all part of assembling those very small little projects, whether it's an adhesive or maybe it's a lubricant or maybe it's some kind of gasketing material, whatever you have, precise control over your, whatever you're dispensing is becoming very important. So I want to start with just a little reference of scale. So what are we talking about when we're talking about like a people liter volume or even a microliter? So I just put up a slide to give you a little bit of an idea of what a picoliter means in terms of the diameter of a sphere. So if you're looking at say one picoliter, it's about 12.4 microns in diameter. And then if we go over on a reference of scale for our distance then, that 30 to 40 micron range is our human visibility threshold. And then as we move up, 100 microns is roughly the size of a human hair. And then getting up to 500 microns, we've got our table salt. 
and then a millimeter the thickness of a dime. And so then, as you can see, from when you move to picoliter to nanoliter to microliter, you can see that kind of grow too. And it gives you at least a little bit of a feel for what we're talking about when we're talking about a nanoliter of fluid dispensed down a pathway. It's, we're talking about about a human hair of, of fluid dispensed down a pathway. So one of the key parts of microdispensing and dispensing of any type is matching the product with the correct technology. Viscosity is often used to numerically provide someone with an idea of what that fluid is like. But there's so many other characteristics, whether it's sticky or stringy or gritty or oily, those play a very key role in what technology might be used for dispensing that product. And there's a lot of different dispensing technologies out there that have been out there for a long time. And some of them have really been getting refined, getting better and better, more tighter control, more precise control. And so today I have to focus on the piezo-driven jetting dispensers and then the rotary positive displacement pumps using the endless piston principle. And a couple of the manufacturers that we've really had success with in some of these technologies is the Biscotech and Nordson. They've both got some very good products that I'll touch on here that we've used in some of our applications to be successful in solving our customers' challenges. So I'll start with this piezo jet non-contact micro-dispensing solution. Non-contact is really key here for this dispenser. It allows you to dispense without actually bringing your needle down to the product and following whatever path that might be. So typically if you have a, a needle dispensing a product, it needs to get close enough to the product to where the surface tension of the product can keep it dragging along and you can keep it into position as you're moving it. Now with the piezo jet, you can actually fly above the material and jet that down, which is really good when we're talking about some of these very small tolerances, because you can imagine if you're dispensing something in that nanoliter range, that bead, if it's a human hair, all of a sudden that surface that you're dispensing on, has to, you have to know exactly where that surface is. If you're dispensing down a nanoliter bead of material, if you can use a picoliter, you can fly above that surface. And even if you have a little bit of imperfection in the molding tolerance or your stack up tolerance of whatever it is that you're using or manufacturing, that then you can compensate. You, you don't have to be exactly, you don't have to map that surface out, so to speak. And the other nice thing about this technology is it works well for very different types of viscosities of materials, even soldering paste. They're using this for chip manufacturing and be very precise with where they're placing these droplets. The other one that we have used is the Viscotech, their, their rotating displacement pump. And this one has been really good for us as well, where it, it really is a unique way to, to create individual precise units of material that you're conveying down a channel and it's different than a typical auger and that an auger moves the whole amount of material. This actually pinches off, if you will, in that lower right corner, you can see individual billets of material that are the same volume. And what that allows is, as you dispense that down, you have those individual billets of material that are the same volume. And when you get to the end, you can actually generate a lot of pressure right near the tip of where you're dispensing. So that gives you really good control right at the tip of where you're dispensing, whether you're, and, and even suck back, like the little bit video there shows. So you can dispense really well, you can suck back really well to cut off, and you can also meter your material very well through typical encoders and things on your system. So uh, Viscotech has been able to get down to that 250 nanoliter range with this technology. And it's really been helpful for us in a number of applications. And, and it works for solid base materials, shear sensitive media. It's been good for different sticky materials. And that suck back really helps cut off the material on your dispenser. So some of the challenges 
that you face in micro dispensing applications, they're similar to other dispensing applications, but oftentimes they're magnified. And even with the advancements and refinements of these micro dispensing technologies, there's still many challenges that exist once you try and integrate that solution to automate it. So you might be able to get your product dispensing very nice out of one of these technologies, but now we need to integrate that into a piece of equipment that can put that droplet or that line that you're trying to produce onto the right surface in the right place every time. And that's where part-to-part -part variation can become really critical and the need for other technologies to make sure that your surfaces are the same or you're mapping your surfaces every time you need to look for is your tip clean because sometimes on these really small applications if you get a little bit of product on your tip and you're trying to dispense that around that can affect that bead as you're laying it down so keeping your nozzle clean making sure you understand your variations in the product that you're manufacturing and even environmental stability is a is an important aspect to consider where vibration can become a big deal sometimes temperature and humidity becomes a big deal down to these levels and then your typical dispense issues so you've got air entrapment in the product that can affect your bead size it can create voids in your bead that you're laying down and then dripping cut off lot to lot product consistency product shelf life those are all things that in a micro dispensing application become more and more critical and things that you really need to look for when you're using this technology. So with that, I guess I'd like to turn it over to Jerry and he can talk a little bit about some of the vision applications. I'm gonna to attempt to build up to 3D vision by discussing how we got there and the components that build up to 3D vision. We've used 3D vision techniques fairly extensively for measuring components and measuring the adhesive beads that we put down on them, and also regular 2D vision. But the incorporation of machine vision technology is an integral part of dispensing systems, enables applications that might be difficult or impossible otherwise. Dispensing very precise quantities requires that you know where it's going and precisely how it's getting there and how much you're dispensing. At Anders Cooper, we have extensive experience integrating machine vision technology when paired with our motion and dispensing expertise. It is the case that there's a lot of really wonderful products here at the show, and we're systems integrators. So we take the products that you can find here, and if you have a product development that needs a solution, we can help you. If it's off the shelf, we're probably not the right company to go to, but if there's something that isn't available off the shelf, we can help you with your product development cycle. Vision technologies for precision automation. First, what is machine vision? Machine vision technologies enable automated machines to detect and interpret their surroundings. Cameras, sensors, imaging processing, image processing algorithms allow systems to mimic human vision, perception, but only with greater speed and, and reliability and accuracy. The machine vision field is changing very rapidly today. Not many years ago, conventional vision, vision algorithms were deployed, which was basically straight software. But today there's a proliferation of machine learning and AI-based vision processing systems. And I'm going to talk about some examples, not all in the dispense domain, but all of them are pertinent to dispense and that they can be applied there. An example I like to bring up is when I first got out of college over 35 years ago, in the machine vision world, bin picking was an ideal that if you could have a robot that could reach into a bin of jumbled parts and pick them out accurately. And it was a goal of the industry. And as recently as five years ago, there wasn't practical applications of bin picking. But today, there's another number of companies on the floor that provide products that will allow you to reliably pick components from bins with robots. So the field is changing rapidly because of software advances. We'll start off with how do we get to machine vision? Imagine a point sensor. It does nothing more than measure the intensity of light at a single location. That might be good for determining presence or absence of a part in a system, but if I take that point and I move it along a line and clock out that data, now I know the intensity of light along a line, and maybe that allows me to locate a component in a system along a single dimension. There's many ways to get to higher dimensions of inspection, sometimes it's by moving the sensor and sometimes it's by adding more arrays of the sensors. A line scan camera is an example of a line of single 
sensors. And so instead of moving a sensor, we now have a line of sensors, maybe a thousand of them. And so I can statically pick out a line. Uh, and I know the intensity along the line, and I can use software to act upon that. Now, if I want to go to two dimensions, I can take that line sensor and I can move it normal to the line and I'm clocking out an XY image. So line cameras are often used for long stripe images when you need to look at a lot of data in a long continuous line. You clock the data out of the line as you move it over the component being measured. But we can also take an array of lines and put them into a grid and what do we have? It's the camera and our cell phone. It's a two dimensional sensor that has pixels in X and Y. We can take a single image and we can use that and act upon it with vision processing algorithms to find component location, orientation, and do metrology um, applications on it. Example of how you might extend a 2D camera into third three dimensions would be to move that camera through focus. As we move it through focus and we pick out the regions that are in focus, we can take a 2D camera and by moving it, we can establish a 3D profile of the object that's under test. Additionally, 3D systems can be generated through stereoscopic systems, just like human eyes. There's a separation of the eyes, and we can infer using software from the two images the displacement and determine the depth of the images we see. And some of the companies like Apera AI use two cameras and, a, and an AI-based system. You give them a model of your product, they will then send it into their AI engine, jumble it up, and they'll come back with a system that can then pick those products from a bin under highly varying light conditions. And they can also pick up parts that are transparent where you can see through one part into a part underneath. And it's all done with just two cameras. And it's really quite impressive. Another technique that we use quite a bit for inspecting adhesive beads is a moving line. We determine displacement by having a laser spot or a laser line and we look at it with a camera a 2d camera coming in at a known angle and as we scan that line the apparent location of the line tells us what the z position is the position of the scan head tells us x and the width of the camera tells us y so we can map out actively 3d surfaces with a moving line another system is to, to determine dimensionality is to use structured light here a single camera is used and projected upon the component is structured light, typically light bands and dark bands. And by using software, by analyzing the light and dark bands and how they're affected by the target, you can infer depth information. And last but not least, our direct ranging systems. Uh, we maybe have all seen these in some of the prototype self-driving cars around. It's a scanning laser beam that raster scans the environment and it measures time of flight of the laser to admitting to the target and back and so it develops a 3D image of the space around it. And then autom automated cars can tell the difference between a pedestrian and a traffic cone and other traffic that might be in the area. Vision system processing capabilities. I touched on this a second ago, but there's two domains that these land in today. There's conventional algorithms and there are AI and machine learning based algorithms. Conventional algorithms typically use discrete tools like edge searches, areas of interest, template model searching, and you build those up into a sequence in order to do a vision inspection. These, are, these have been used for many years and they're very effective, but they usually take a highly trained or skilled programmer to put them together. Uh, in some cases, the companies that build these have made them very easy to put together, like in a graphic manner where you can put together the various locators to find them. But typically they require someone who has a certain amount of skill in this arena. The machine-based learning systems that are available today, however, are extremely helpful and they're extremely easy to set up, especially if you're looking to determine the difference between a good part and a bad part. All that's needed is develop a library of images where you determine these are good parts and a library of images, these are bad parts. You feed them the machine learning system, it develops its own internal modeling, and it will now, when it acquires an image, it will tell you whether that part is good or bad based on the library of good and part, bad parts that it gave to you. Sometimes vision systems need to perform critical measurements. Maybe we want to know the width of an adhesive bead or the diameter of a deposited droplet. There are systems available uh, today, some from Keyence, that allow you to have a, a superposition of both machine learning and conventional systems to get the best of both worlds. So maybe you use the machine learning portion to find the orientation and the location of a part, 
and then you can apply edge finders and template searches to establish uh, metrology information. What's the width? What's the height? What's a critical go, no-go measurement for that component? Decisions that uh, impact implementation success. Successful implementation depends on more than just picking a vision system. Important decisions that you need to make when you're in this domain are how easy is it to set up and maintain? If it's hard to set up, if it's hard to maintain, you'll spend more money, you'll spend more time putting that system into operation and keeping it running. Selection of optics and illumination. Depending on what you're inspecting, you may be able to get away with an inexpensive lens for your camera system, but that may be completely inappropriate if you're doing metrology where you need a more expensive lens. So selecting the proper optics is extremely important and also in selecting the proper illumination sources. Depending on what you're inspecting, there are many different types of illumination that can either make the job harder or easier. Some targets require coaxial illumination, but some targets are best inspected using dark field illumination. Picking the right illumination source can make your job much easier when it comes to actually processing those images. Another component of this that, that we like to talk to and where we actively like to be engaged with our customers is in the realm of design for manufacturability. Often we get a product already designed, already set in stone, and it turns out that just the addition of some fiducials to allow the machine vision system to properly locate that part in space in order to process some of the manufacturing operations could have been added for no cost but we're at the point where we can't add that anymore. So it makes the manufacturing side much harder. So it's always important to spend some time thinking about the manufacturability of your product. Patterning is where you're dispensing perhaps microarrays of droplets onto a substrate. And uh, I guess another way of talking about it, I imagine when the pattern completely overlaps, people might refer to that as printing. So in the same way that a single light sensor can be extrapolated into a line of sensors and an array of sensors, a single piezo drop dispenser like Ryan was referring to earlier can be built into an array, potentially hundreds or thousands of droplet dispensers in a linear array. And then if you move that linear array across the substrate, we can effectively print microarrays or we can print other things that are helpful. So uh, these are useful for dispensing biologicals, reagents, mass compounds, and even conductive substances for literally printing wires. And in all of these cases, active feedback is really important, right? It's one thing to have a dispenser that can dispense precise amounts, but first you need to be able to lot align your substrate very precisely. So having those fiducials to find where the substrate's at precisely on your print platform is very important. And fiducials that give you accuracy that are several times greater than the print accuracy that you're trying to accomplish is ideal. One example of that would be a chrome on glass standard where you can get submicron accuracy for those fiducials, again, if you need it. But when we're talking about very small deposition sites, we need very accurate positioning. Additionally, these arrays of piezo dispensers require maintenance periodically, especially depending on the substance being dispensed. And when you first start them up, maybe every nozzle isn't printing properly. Perhaps one's blocked, perhaps there's some buildup on the nozzle head and it'll cause the droplet to be skewing off to the side. So there needs to be an initial print quality check done, and that's best done by machine vision so you can verify every droplet is in the correct location. And then there's dispense pattern triggering. Diesel dispensers eject droplets sometimes in velocities in meters per second. Sounds very fast, but if you're moving while printing, there's a time of flight where you need to trigger the dispense waveform to the piezo head well before the location you want to land on. And if you're doing bi-directional printing, then if you want to print on the same spot every time when you're going in reverse, you have to trigger on the opposite side of the target location. Again, establishing what the flight times is best done with machine vision. Print a test pattern while on the fly at a known velocity. Knowing where the trigger was made, you can then examine the location of the deposition and determine what the flight time was for that droplet. Other things to look out for when using really small piezo printing. There's an interesting effect when you generate a droplet from a printhead, it tends to pull charge with it. So as that droplet flies to the substrate, you're effectively moving charge from the printhead to the substrate. Generally not a problem, but some fluids require to be dispensed in a dry environment. So you need to environmentally control and dry environments are really bad for bleeding off charge. So it is the case that without proper design considerations, 
as you print, charge builds up on an, on an insulative substrate, and that charge can deflect future droplets as you try to print them. It'll be deflected. Using good grounding techniques, using static dissipative materials, and using ionizers in your environment, in your enclosed environment, can greatly help with accuracy because you're not having those static-based influences. Inspection lighting, once again, we talked about that a little bit. For droplets on a flat substrate, coaxial lighting is ideal. The flat substrate retroflects light straight to the camera so it looks like a white background. The droplet, typically domed, scatters light in many directions so it looks, looks very dark on the substrate. The high contrast imaging makes image processing very easy. You don't have to worry about things where it can't quite tell where the edge of the droplet is. It's very precise. And I guess last is depending on the substance you're emitting, you may need to perform these operations in a dry environment. Uh, extremely small droplets that, are, that contain volatiles will evaporate extremely fast. So that may or may not be a problem for the process that you have, but it's a consideration. Also, temperature dependencies of materials, sometimes printing masking materials, their, their viscosity changes rapidly with temperature. So it's important to temperature control the supply lines and the print head at the proper temperature so you get a viscosity that's matched to the waveform of the piezo print head. And last, for certain low viscosity fluids, they will tend to drool from piezo printers right, with very low viscosity. They'll form a big droplet on the print head. And so you need to apply back pressure so that they set right at the right location on the print head. But the head of the print reservoir affects the back pressure. So a full tank has a certain amount of pressure on the head. And if you set your back pressure so that it's proper there, it may not be proper when the tank is near empty. Implementing active back pressure control over the reservoir to ensure that the pressure at the inkjet print head is consistent can greatly enhance print quality. A moving laser displacement sensor, as we talked about, can be moved over a component surface to generate a dispense pattern that's custom for every component. And that's one of the projects we did recently that we like to talk about. Incoming products were, their variance was large compared to the accuracy of the dispense pattern we needed to make. So the solution was to 3D map the surface of the incoming product 100% and then do a dispense pattern, do another 3D map. So custom dispense pattern based on each product that we're working at. And then with the second pass, we can basically do an image subtraction and what we have left is just the dispense material. And we can take that information and feed it back to the system. Maybe we're too thin in one area because we're moving quickly. How we can slow down in that area. Maybe we have too much material on a corner. We need to speed up there. And so as incoming materials change, the system can automatically adapt. Another piece is maintainability. Almost all dispense systems require maintenance. You need to change out the dispense needle. You need to change out the augers periodically because the material is sets up. You need to clean the print head. When you build a system, just having a printer and just being able to print correctly is part of it, being, but being able to maintain that quickly and easily is also important for uptime. If you want a high OEE, you need to be able to go in, perform maintenance, add new material, and get back to running. Um, so some of the ways that Vision enables that is, for instance, automated needle tip location. You take a lure lock needle out, a uh, pressure time dispenser, put a new one in, the tip's no longer in the same place that it was. So being able to pull that in front of a camera, snap a couple images, establish its new XY location, makes that quick and easy to deal with. Uh, automatic wiping of print heads and needles and piezo nozzles is also one technique. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Ryan. Okay, thanks, Jerry. Application development. Integrating this all together now. That's what we do at AC. And the thing that we want to really point out is from an end-to-end -end standpoint, whether it's your product development or it's your automation or maybe it's your testing, we've worked with a lot of different technologies within our company to solve customers' challenges and really taking those different technologies and integrating them together to solve your problem is what we're here for. I want to touch a little bit on design for manufacturability. That's one thing that Jerry mentioned, and it's really important in a lot of different applications that it's considered right up front because it can really help drive what technology you are looking to use in your product and for the manufacturing side of things. And 
ethic can be really key to your success from a cost standpoint and from a speed standpoint to get it right, right away. And we have a product development group that can help on those side of things. And when they understand the risks, typically at that point of the project, they understand what to look for from a dispensing side of things. And even from molding, that sort of thing, they can guide you in different types of adhesives, different types of features to put into your par parts and really set you up for success from the onset in your product development life cycle. I'll let Jerry touch on this next one here. Solving complex precision motion challenges. The appropriate technology for a given dispensing application varies depending on what you're trying to accomplish. In some cases, a simple pneumatic actuator is sufficient to put down a single droplet of adhesive. It's simple and easy. In other cases, you need to dispense along a line or maybe around a circle. In those cases, perhaps stacked linear actuators that are really nice for precise dispensing over X, Y, and Z varying dispense locations. And in some cases, you might want to look at a, at a robot. Almost all modern robots have excellent software that allow you to path tracing for dispensing on large work envelope objects, potentially meters across. But for very high accuracy systems, sometimes we have resorted to using hexapod robots. They give us six axis control. They allow us to keep critical components orthogonal to the dispense tip. When we're using low viscosity components that, that might otherwise want to run away from us, if we are using a dispense tip to dispense around the side of a product, we can keep the dispense surface always normal to the dispense tip. They're extremely accurate and they're very stiff. Again, dispensing applications are highly variable on what sort of motion you might use. So picking the right motion platform is a critical component. This slide's a bit of a repeat from earlier, but just to go back to it, we're able to help our customers by helping them in the product development stage to help them understand what's required in the manufacturing stage and giving them feedback for design for manufacturability. And in some cases, 100% mapping of parts in order to dispense and 100% mapping of the dispense pattern gives you all the information you might need in order to have a successful product. And with suitable forethought, we can do dispensing in the single digit mark micron range. So just wrapping up what we talked about earlier, when we started out, we had a client that was really looking to find out if their product was even viable and helping them develop a platform that could really test out technologies and find the right technology at the onset to make their product successful. And so sometimes that means you can find an off the shelf solution, but oftentimes when you're talking about some of these micro dispensing applications and very fine, precise control of your dispense and curing and whatever else might be entailed with that, it really requires a custom solution and custom software to pull all of that together and bringing in that vision to the adhesive side of things and helping that work together in unison is really key to the success of a project like this. On, on this project, we were able to put down a bead of adhesive to within plus or minus 50 microns. And it, there was, it was a bead that was about a half a millimeter wide. So, so we needed to make sure that bead wouldn't flow one way or another as it was dispensed over a complex surface. So we needed to map out that surface and dispense that bead down. And then also we needed to qualify that bead was placed correctly. As Jerry mentioned, using some of those technologies from Vision, we could actually map out the bead that was dispensed and take a negative image of that, so to speak, and then actually have that ribbon of material that we could verify had been placed correctly. And then automated tip calibration, of course, is key, something that we did here. And then cleaning the tip, that was also key. And we also made it so that we could test out multiple different dispensers on this system. Because again, at the onset, you might find that it's a UV cure adhesive that works best, or maybe that's what you think works. And then you need to switch up to a different adhesive. The characteristics of that adhesive are a little different and you need to use a little different technology to dispense that other adhesive. We designed a platform for the customer that we could switch out these different adhesive dispensers to really be successful out of the gate and make sure that they had their product in a place that it could be commercialized. 
And uh, yeah, this custom software was key along with that in, in, in integrating all of that together. Thanks, Ryan. Just to wrap up, automate the impossible. AT solves the world's toughest problems through a multidisciplinary engineering approach. Go faster by solving complex engineering challenges and parallel with your in-house team, grow stronger with differentiated IP that gives your tech-driven product a competitive advantage. And go beyond the limits of your imagination with novel solutions, design innovation, and accelerated development teams. Thank you very much.